Well, hey everybody, John Ritlin here, and here is another WrestleMania ranking video. Every WrestleMania tag team title match ranked from worst to best. There are going to be a few that I'm going to mention in honorable mentions here in just a second, <clears throat> but basically the reason I want to do these videos is everybody likes my ranking videos. Everybody likes the ranking videos, and apparently, I don't know why in the world I'm so goddamn loopy, uh, I figured I'd just talk about some more of these. Now, I again, like other videos that I've done, now that I've done a few of these, I have talked about a few of these before, so I'll probably just skip through some of the ones I've talked about and just get on to some of the really, really good ones. So here's the honorable mentions. Primo and Epico versus Gabriel and Kid versus the Usos, Mania 28 and the uh, pre-show. <coughs> the Colognes versus Morrison and Miz in the unification match at Mania 25. And... Uh, the free-for-all, you know, before they named it the pre-show, Body Donna's versus the Godwins for the vacant WWE Tag Team titles at Mania 12. I have actually seen all those. I found a couple of those links on YouTube, and <laughs> they're decent, but they're not really worth mentioning, and, like, I just figured I'd just mention them. Like, yeah, okay, they're they're there. So now we move on to the other 28, and the worst one, Braun and Nicholas versus The Bar at Mania 34. Look, I'm... I hope the kid had fun. I'm not here to knock the kid one bit. The bar were made to look like doofuses. Braun was made to look like a goddamn doofus. Braun should have been feuding for the Universal title. Braun should have been in that match with um, Reigns and with Reigns and uh, Lesnar. He just he just should not have been in this match. It was fucking stupid, and it made the tag titles a fucking joke. I mean, the tag titles have still not recovered, and the Revival are currently champions. It's just really fucking dumb. Number 27, Men on a Mission versus the Quebecers at Mania 10. Men on a Mission were super over. I'm glad they didn't win the tag titles here, but it also left them flat. And then the Quebecers lost to the Head Shrinkers a couple weeks after this, after, you know, Mania 10. In a pretty damn good match, actually, at, on, a, on a Raw taping. But, yeah, this, this match is pretty flat. And a flat finish and everything. Just not really anything good. And then we get to number 26, Show and Miz versus, well, Show Miz, versus Morrison and Truth to Mania 26. And yeah, I covered it before. It was like three and a half minutes and Big Show, KO punch it, it whatever. Show Miz retains. Hooray! G glad we gave that few minutes. You know, entrances that were longer than the actual match, that's never a good thing at all. <laughs> It, unless it's an Undertaker match and it's like a Taker match versus Mark Henry or something like that, which wasn't very good. But yeah, this was not very good at all. Number 25, Jarrett and uh, Owen, Owen Hart. <sighs> that death hit me hard. That, 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 that one still hurts. But anyway, Jarrett and Owen versus D'Lo Brown and Test at Mania 15. D'Lo and Test won some kind of goofy battle royal where they were two unlikely partners that on a on you know Sunday Night Heat that won the right to face the tag team champions over like four minutes and Jarrett and Owen won <clears throat> as they should have they shouldn't have lost to D'Lo and Tess they were all feuding and everything and it was dumb it was really fucking stupid who the hell did oh right Russo probably came up with that idea because it was a stupid idea so of course Russo came up with it um and on the pre-show you had Chief Morley uh, and Lance Storm versus Kane and RVD at the Mania 19 uh, pre-show the Dudleys had interfered and done some stuff. And this is when the Dudleys were in Bischoff's pocket because they needed a job and stuff like that. And Chief Morley, by the way, was Val Venus. Again, if I've blown your mind with any of this stuff, I really shouldn't have because that one was pretty common knowledge. Chief Morley or Val Venus, the guy still was a very mediocre worker. But Lance Storm, Lance Storm is a great worker. And has, great, and has a great sense of humor on Twitter and on, on his podcast that he does. But yeah... And this match actually might have benefited from being on, on the main card, but eh, it was what it was. <laughs> yeah, Dudley's kind of screwed over everybody. That I mean, the crowd popped, but then the crowd didn't pop because the Dudley's screwed over to keep their jobs and everything. So then we get to number 23, and this is a lot of people, so forgive me. Yet, uh, it's at Mania 20 for the Raw Tag Titles. Booker and RVD, uh, the Dudley's, Law Resistance, Rene Dupree and uh, Rob Conway, Garrison Cade and Mark Jindrak. Garrison Cade would later become Lance Cade, who would unfortunately pass before his 30th birthday. I actually think I saw his last match in WWE, at least on TV, um, like on a Raw, I think it was Raw, like in late, it was late October, early November. But anyway, 
So yeah, that happened. And this was like RVD and Boca were champions, and then they left as champions, and it wasn't very good. It was a four-way match. It was a... Mania 20 was like, get everybody on the goddamn card. That's pretty much what it was. It was get everybody on the goddamn card, no matter how good the match was. And this wasn't very good. One that was slightly better, because it was a little shorter. Um, number 22, Rikishi and Sky Tuhati versus the APA versus the Bastions versus the world's greatest tag team, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. And SmackDown Live tag titles, yeah, Mania 20. It was, again, a bit shorter. It was a little less star power. <laughs> APA would break up soon after this. Bastions were pretty much, you know, kind of just destroyed. Even though I believe they would become tag team champions later, they just weren't very, they weren't taken very seriously, mainly because of the whole Linda Miles stench that was left on them. And no, that's not a euphemism or a dirty joke. It's just she was the shit and left a bad stench on that team. They were a hell of a team, by the way. The Bastions were really goddamn good. But, yeah, Rikishi Sky Juati retained. And then... <sighs> the tag team divisions were so shit at this point, even with all the talents. They had a lot of tag teams, a lot of makeshift ones. And also, APA would break up soon after this. But then we get number 21, the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Usos versus the New Day at Mania 34. This is covered a little bit more on the Mania 34 review that myself and the Derb did, but it just... Yeah, it wasn't very good. It really wasn't. Uh, the entrances, I think New Day's entrance might have been longer than this match. This match was like six minutes. And the Bludgeon Brothers won. The Usos got on the main card and lost in a really short match. And something that just, it was not very, very good for them. <laughs> the Usos have been kind of done dirty on a lot of these. On a lot of the, you know, either being on the pre-show or just being in the Battle Royal and this kind of stuff. And they finally make it to the main card. And the match was pretty much throwaway. When, when New Day's entrance with a bunch of midgets dressed in pancakes is of the highlight of your match, that's not very good. Then we get to number 20, Beefcake and Hogan versus Money, Inc. at Mania 9. Well, it featured Beefcake and Hogan as a tag team, and Hogan didn't want to win the tag titles, even though his buddy could have gotten a tag team championship run, and <clears throat> that might have been nice. Nope, Money, Inc. kept the titles, and they did They did this. It was like an 18-minute match. It's pretty much the same thing they did with Tatanka and Sean. It was a long match with a stupid finish, so it just undid everything. Doing a bad finish is, or doing like a finish where it's a count out, disqualification, that kind of stuff, isn't always the worst thing in the world. But honestly, Beefcake and Hogan should have not been competing for the titles, but if they were, then beat Money Inc. in this kind of stuff and hold them for a bit. But Hogan felt the tag titles were beneath him. He didn't in 2002, but that's mainly because Edge carried the team, because Hogan couldn't even carry Edge's jock by that goddamn point. And I don't care how much charisma Hogan had by that point. He was wiped out after that match with The Rock. That was his swan song. You know he would wrestle for a number of years, off and on for a number of years after that. But yeah, uh, Money Inc. You know kept the titles, and Mania Nine was off to a not very good start. Even though it had been going for a bit, it was not a very good show. I hate Mania Nine. If I mentioned that, number nineteen, Natural Disasters versus Money Inc. at Mania Eight, and this was not a very good match either. But hey. It, just, it was sloppy because it was weird. The Road Warriors were tag team champions, I think, at, at the Royal Rumble that year. <laughs> Then Hawk got, I believe, popped for a wellness test. Natural Disasters won the tag titles. And then Money, Inc. were going to feud with them. And then Money, Inc. would end up capturing the titles from uh, the Natural Disasters sometime after this. I mean, it might have been a number of months after that, but still, it was what it was. Oh, well, I mean, at least with this one, it was slightly better because it was shorter. I mean, you know, this, this only took like eight, nine minutes to get to as opposed to the almost 20 minutes that the previous match got. Number 18, Masters and Carlito versus Kane and Show, and this was at uh, Mania 22, We've covered it before. Carlito and Masters not winning the tag titles. I'm not saying they should have, but the fact that they just got slaughtered, and Kane had to be the one to be the guy that was beat up for a bit, it didn't serve purpose. It wasn't very good. It just, it just wasn't very good. Let, let's just be perfectly honest about that. It... <laughs> Not a bad opener, but just Masters and Carlito, this unlikely team, they just got basically squashed. So that's kind of why it's ranked where it is. Number 17, Team Hell No versus Big E and uh, Dolph Ziggler, Mania 29. This was Big E's main roster match debut at Mania. They did the same with Fandango. And they wonder why Fandango flopped. And I like Fandango. I like Big E. <laughs> but back to this match. Decent, Team Hell No retained, as they should have. There really wasn't a reason for them to lose. But it kind of took... It 
it took the piss out of Big E right away. Of course, Ziggler ended up cashing in um, the next night to a thunderous pop, which was tremendous. But yeah, by this point, the Team Hell No Act had kind of run its course. They would lose the tag titles to Rollins and Reigns very soon after this. I think it Extreme Rules. Where the Shield would end up holding all the gold. Well, <coughs> tag titles and U.S. title. But yeah, was what it was and not a bad match. And on the pre-show of Mania 31, we get Tyson Kidd and Cesaro versus Los Matadores versus New Day versus the Usos. Pretty good match. Not great, but pretty good. Really did get the crowd going and everything. Kidd and Cesaro, God, I feel so bad for Tyson Kidd. I'm glad that he's healthy and doing well and everything, but my God, I just wish he would have been able to... I, I wish the... Obviously, I wish the injury hadn't happened and he had been able to keep wrestling because him and Cesaro were an incredible tag team. And Kidd had reinvented himself in NXT. But I digress. It was what it was. It was a good match. It wasn't the best four-way um, tag team match on the pre-show. That one comes up later. But then we get to number 15, Team Angle versus Benoit versus... Team. Let me try that again. Team Angle versus Chris Benoit and Rhino versus Los Guerreros for the SmackDown uh, tag titles at Mania 19. <laughs> Fun, fast-paced, three-way match. I think only went about 10 minutes, but it was goddamn good. It was goddamn entertaining. And, um, you know, Team Angle being the champions and everything by this point was the right call. And then retaining the titles was the right call, even though Kurt would have to take a back seat after this. It was very good stuff, though. <clears throat> not, not wonderful, but in some spots it was very, very good. And we get to number 14, Yokozuna and Owen Hart versus the Smoking Guns at Mania 11. Yokozuna was revealed as the partner of Owen Hart. And, okay, Yoko and Owen pretty much fucking destroyed the Smoking Guns. They got in some offense and everything, but it was obviously Yoko and uh, Owen were going to be the champions. And they were, and they held them for a number of months until Diesel and Sean won them and then never defended them. Some of the worst tag team champions of all time because they won them and never defended them and held them for like two goddamn months. Ugh. <clears throat> but Yoko and Owen did uh, get the victory here. Smoking Guns were a pretty good tag team, all things considered. Um, actually, they were pretty. They were probably actually say, I say the best tag team Billy Gunn was involved in. Yeah, sorry, I don't count the New Age Outlaws as the best team he was involved in, maybe the most popular, but whatever. So number thirteen, Nasty Boys versus the Hart Foundation at Mania Seven. Very fun, very good stuff. Uh, Jimmy Hart helping them, the Nasty Boys cheat <coughs> to get the Nasty Boys the victory. And earn the tag team championships. And this would pretty much be the final match for Brett and Jim as a team. And then Brett would go off on a singles run. And Jim would do what he did. And then would lead the company subsequently soon after. But, you know, and I mean they would reform as a heart foundation a number of years later. With Brett, Jim, Owen, Pillman, and uh, Davey. You know, Davey Boy. But it was a good match. It was well done. And, you know, Nasty Boys got the right amount of heat. So that was the right call. Number 12, Demolition versus the Powers of Pain and Mr. Fuji at Mania 5. Handicap match, and of course, Mr. Fuji ended up being the one that got targeted after Warrior, or Warlord, Wolf Warrior. It would be weird if Warrior was in the Powers of Pain, even though he caused a lot of pain by just having to watch him wrestle because he was a shit. Warlord and Barbarian, <clears throat> once they got isolated and taken out, they zeroed in on Mr. Fuji, beat him, and Demolition won the tag titles as a face, or as a heel team, the previous Mania, and won him as a face team, this Mania. And then won him again as a face team at Mania 6. They flip-flop Demolition face to heel a lot for whatever reason. But yeah, it was a good match. And not the best Demolition match that they got involved in. That one's a little later. Number 11, Billy and Chuck versus the APA versus the Dudleys versus the Hardys in a four corners elimination match at Mania 18. I enjoyed it. Very good stuff. It <coughs> was... It, it was it was a nice way to establish Billy and Chuck as, you know, a good force. They were actually a pretty good team. I mean, there were some people that didn't necessarily like the gimmick, and okay, if it makes you uncomfortable, whatever. I mean, that's okay. I mean, you could not like you cannot like the gimmick, but let's not be too let's not be too severe about it. It was just a gimmick. But it was they were a really good tag team. Palumbo was a much better tag team wrestler, I think, than a singles wrestler, and same with Billy. Even though both were good workers, they did compliment each other. And they were tag team champions heading in and going out of this as they should have been. Because they had beaten Taz and Spike Dudley soon, like sometime before this. Because Taz had to retire due to neck issues. That was a good four corners match. Number 10, Andre and Haku versus Demolition at Mania 6. This is one of the matches I talked about just a bit before. I loathe 
seen Andre like this in the ring. He was so beat up. And the other thing is Andre. It's so sad to see him like this. Haku carried the whole goddamn thing. Andre did the kick spot where he got his arms tangled in the ropes and everything. And Haku got beat. <clears throat> and then Andre got to lead the hero. And that's part of the reason why I ranked this so damn high. But yeah, Andre being in this condition really sad. But hey, at least, at least we get, um, at least we got, you know, Andre leaving as a hero. And Demolition got to leave his champions. So, yeah, that was pretty nice. And we get to number nine, and that is Owen and Bulldog versus Mankind Invader at Mania 13. Long match. Yeah, I didn't necessarily like... Well, okay, it wasn't a super long match. I didn't necessarily like the fact that it was kind of a non-finish. But it was a well-worked match. And Mankind Invader teaming up. And Bulldog and Owen being an incredible tag team. And... Shortly after uh, Bulldog had become European champion and they had that great finals uh, match in, I believe, Germany, one of my favorite Raw matches, one of my favorite matches of all time, it was <laughs> it was weird how these teams were going to work well together, but they did, and Owen and Bulldog ended up walking out as champions, even with the fluky finish. Still, not great, but still pretty good. Number eight, Demolition versus Strike Force at Mania 4, and yes, this is where Strike Force broke up. Tito was out for a while, and then Martel... Actually, I think it's a, it, one of them was injured. I think it, it was either Tito or it was Martel. I think it might have been it might have been Martel actually. So the bottom line is is what <laughs> what's important is that they had as you know Strike Force end up losing the titles, so Demolition won them here. Then winning them at three consecutive WrestleManias is actually pretty cool. It showed the faith that they had in Demolition. Good stuff though, and Demolition being full on heels. Despite feuding with Mr. Fuji like a number of months later and in the Mania 5, <laughs> it was really enjoyable in Strike Force. They were a good team. Just it's just it, Martel got saddled with some partners that for one reason or another didn't necessarily work out long term. It worked out better than Tom Zank, of course, and again, that's because Tito Santana could run circles around Tom Zank. A lot easier to do now, given what happened to Zank, but I digress. <laughs> number Seven, Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov versus the U.S. Express, Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. And, or Rotundo, I think he was called Rotundo, but yeah, U.S. Express. And this was the first ever uh, tag, uh, title change, rather, at a Mania and took place at Mania 1. And because Freddie Blassie's cane got used, <laughs> U.S. Express lost. Barry Windham would go back to the uh, NWA soon after. I think he would go to Florida and he'd go to the NWA. But, um, yeah, it was kind of a shame about the U.S. Express. They were a pretty good team. Rotunda wouldn't last very long either. He would go actually back to the NWA. But yeah, good match though, and mainly ranking it here because of the fact that it was the first ever title change at a Mania. Number six, Bulldogs versus the Dream Team. Beefcake and Greg the Hammer Valentine at Mania 2. This is where Ozzy Osbourne was out there and coherently somewhat saying, Bulldogs forever. He sounded like he was 85 years old, went back in 86. How sad is that? <laughs> um, don't do drugs, kid. Don't ever fucking do drugs. But yeah, the Bulldogs winning here. It was cool. And, you know, Dr Beefcake and Valentine actually complimented each other as a dream team. It was really good stuff. Bulldogs, though, getting this victory. Right call, even though Bulldog or, you know, uh, Dynamite would end up hurting his back and everything. Dynamite, by the way, piece of shit. Sorry, he was. Hell of a worker, <laughs> but... Was what it was, but anyway, that happened. Uh, Bulldog did get Bulldogs did get the victory as they should have. Dream Team did not need to hold the titles any longer, so there we go. Number five, Cactus Jack Chainsaw Charlie, who was Terry Funk under a mask. Again, I apologize if all these shocking revelations are just blowing your mind, like I've done on some of these. But yeah, Chainsaw Charlie was Terry Funk. I don't know why he was having a chain. I don't know why he couldn't just be Terry Funk. Like he was at the uh, '97 Rumble. <laughs> but anyway, they faced the New Age Outlaws in a dumpster match at Mania 14 and. I ranked it this high because, uh, you know, Foley and Funk, Funk and Foley actually won this. I mean, they had to, like, think they lost the titles, like, you know, soon after this, or they got relinquished due to them not using the dumpster at ringside, but using a dumpster in the back as if that was against the rules. But yeah, that happened, and <laughs> winning it, them winning the titles is what ranked it so goddamn high. It was not a very technical match at all. Not very good. But still, enjoyable, very fun. And then we get to... A pre-show match. The Real Americans versus Rybaxel versus the Usos versus Los Matadores at Mania 30. And yeah, you may be surprised this is ranked so goddamn high. You may notice with this list that there are some matches where it's like, okay, <coughs> I see why they're ranked there, but why are these ranked here? There were some good matches and there were some shitty ones. 
This one, however, pretty damn terrific in watching the real Americans split up and Cesaro going on to win the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, the inaugural one, later in the night was really nice. This actually really did flow really well, and you wouldn't think, given the talent involved, well, Usos and Real Americans, I mean, you know, Los Matadores and Rybaxel, who the fuck cares about them, but actually it flowed pretty damn well. And once it got down, once, you know, the Real Americans lost, <laughs> um, it's good stuff. It was really good stuff. And I really enjoyed it. And that whole split up of, like, Cesaro turning babyface was really nice. Number three, the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro. Do 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 do. Sheamus and Cesaro. Enzo and Cass, Gals and Anderson in a ladder match at Mania 33. The Hardys' big return. Big shocking return. Even though some people thought it, they still lost their shit. I lost my shit watching. I wish I would have recorded myself reacting to it. <clears throat> I don't think I had a voice by the end of the match. Don't know how I had a voice for the uh, review. But this is great stuff. It was not the greatest ladder match ever, um, but it was great stuff to watch everybody do some cool spots and everything, and Jeff not kill himself doing this, and Matt still moving around, and 70,000 people doing the delete chant. That was really cool. It was it was good. It was really enjoyable stuff. I mean, you know, it was, it was a car crash. It was what it was. Uh, Enzo somehow managed to not hurt himself. And, yeah, it was just an enjoyable match. Gallows and Anderson, by the way, were tag team champions heading into this. I forgot that. <laughs> Number two, Edge and Christian versus the Hardys versus the Dudleys in a triangle ladder match of Mania 2000, Mania 16. Yeah, set the benchmark for tag team wrestling in the later part of the Attitude Era and, well, I mean, one of the matches it did. And just, you know, Edge and Christian, Hardys and Dudleys were just intertwined with each other for a couple of years, as rightfully so. They worked so well together. And it was great stuff, you know, Jeff doing that insane swanton onto uh, Bubba Ray and kind of missing some of it. Matt just getting murdered by being thrown through a table and look like it's, you know, broken to a million pieces. Um, just great tag team work. Really terrific tag team work. It's really hard to beat this. Except TLC2 is the number one match for Mania 17. And the same teams involved, Edge and Christian, the Dudleys and the Hardys. Rhino getting involved to help Edge and Christian. And <coughs> Lita getting involved to help the Hardys. And cracking Spike Dudley over, over the head with a chair. Spike Dudley getting involved to help the Dudleys. Hitting, hitting the acid drop Dudley dog on Christian through a table and hurting himself. But yeah, Spike getting cracked in the head. Lita taking a 3D. Rhino freaking murdering Matt Hardy. Ramming him through a table. Rhino coming in later and, th and pushing the ladder. <coughs> sending Bubba Ray and Matt Hardy through tables and everything on the outside. Jeff Hardy hanging from the cables earlier and Edge spearing him and DDTing himself and everything and spiking himself on the ground. Too much good, too many good spots and everything. Fantastic match. Probably, you could argue, well, actually, I don't think you really could argue. I mean, it was the show stealing match of Mania 17, even though Austin and Rock had the most shocking end. That's really all there is to say. Those are every single WrestleMania, that's every single WrestleMania tag team title match ranked from worst to best. Ran through some of them, but that's because I covered them before. Do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland, and I will see you soon.